We begin our service by acknowledging the traditional territory upon which we stand. For many thousands of years, the Sinaiaks and other peoples have sought to walk gently on this land. They offered assistance to the first European travellers to this territory and shared their knowledge for survival in what was, at times, a harsh climate. We seek a new relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based in honour and deep respect. Our service begins um, with our hymn. Uh, number 181, All Glory, Lord and Honour to Thee, Redeemer King. Would you be seated? Today, for the first time since 2019, we are starting our Easter celebrations, our Holy Week and Easter celebrations, together in person. Uh, I hope everybody has, a, I know, it's great. Um, has everybody got a palm cross? Because you're going to need one of those later on. Excellent. Um, Dear friends in Christ, during Lent, 
we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. On this day, our Lord Jesus Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph. The people welcomed him with palms and shouts of praise. But the path before him led to self-giving, suffering and death. Today, we greet him as our king, although we know his crown is thorns and his throne a cross. We follow him this week from the glory of the palms to the glory of the resurrection by way of the dark road of suffering and death. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and new life. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy into the celebration of those mighty acts whereby you give us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you stand for the Palm Sunday Gospel reading? The Gospel of Luke. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find there tied a colt that has never been written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, The Lord needs it. So they were sent, departed, and found it as they had been told. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God, joyfully and with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And now you need your palms. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Hebrews acclaimed Jesus as Messiah and King, with palm branches in their hands crying, Hosanna in the highest. May we also, carrying these emblems, go forth to meet Christ and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Now I'm going to invite you to join me in saying the collect for this Sunday. Holy and immortal God, open our hearts to the Blessed One so that we may enter the gates of your justice, confessing in our words and in our deeds that Jesus is Lord, now and forever. Amen. Please would you be seated for our readings. reading from the book of Isaiah. 
The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, <clears throat> wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Psalm 118. Our refrain today is His steadfast love endures forever. His steadfast, steadfast love endures, endures forever. forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His, His steadfast, steadfast love endures, endures forever. forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I might enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. His, His steadfast love endures forever. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. His steadfast love endures forever. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God. I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will extol you. His steadfast love endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. His steadfast love endures forever. Our second reading. Philippians two, five to eleven. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was found in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us, the Church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. 
Before we hear the long uh, passion gospel, we're going to sing My Song is Love Unknown, which is number 184 in the blue books. We're going to leave out verse 2. Please, would you be seated? As is usual on this day, we're going to hear the, um, the whole of the Passion story. And as we go through that, we're going to sing at various stages, Stay With Me. Number 194. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called the Passover, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put Jesus to death, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, Judas called the Iscariot, who was one of the number of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and captives 
how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and engaged to give him money. So he agreed and sought an opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb has to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. Where will you have us prepare? Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house which he enters, and tell the householder, the teacher says unto you, Where is the guest room where I am to eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished. There make ready. And they went and found it as it, as it had been told them, and they prepared the Passover. Stay with us, O Lord Jesus Christ, night will soon fall. Then stay with us, O Lord Jesus Christ, night in our darkness. And when the hour came, he sat at a table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this, and divide it amongst yourselves. For I tell you, that from now on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, but behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes as it, has it, been, excuse me, as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question number no, one another, which of them it was that would do this. A dispute also arose among them, which of them was to be regarded as the greatest? The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as one who serves. For which is greater, one who sits at the table or one who serves? Is it not one who sits at the table, but I am among you as one who serves? You are those who have continued with me in my trials. As my Father appointed a kingdom for me, so do I appoint for you, that you may eat and drink at my table, in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brethren. Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you three times deny that you know me. When I sent you out with no purse or bag or sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing. Nothing. But now, let him who has a purse take it, and likewise a bag. And let him who has no sword sell his mantle and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was reckoned with transgressors. For what is written about me has its fulfillment. Look, Look Lord, Lord, here are two swords. swords. It is enough. Christ, in our darkness. 
And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there he appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being, being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down upon the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. He said to them, Why, Why do, you, do you sleep? Sorry. Why do you sleep? Rise and pray that you may not t enter into temptation. And while he was still speaking, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And when those who were about him saw what would follow, they said, Lord, Lord shall, shall we strike, strike with, with the sword? sword? And one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear, but Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and captains of the temple and elders who had come out against him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. Peter followed at a distance, and when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a maid, seeing him as he sat in the light and gazing at him, said, This man also was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them. Man, I am not. After an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, Certainly this man also is with him, for he is a Galilean. Man, I do not know what you are saying. And immediately, while they were still speaking, the cock crowed. And Jesus turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus mocked him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and asked him, Prophecy, who is it that hit you? And they spoke many other words against him, reviling him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council, and they said, If you are Christ, tell us. If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. Are you the Son of God, then? You say that I am. What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate, and they began to accuse him. We found this man perverting our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so. 
I find no crime in this man. He stirs up the people teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself at Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had long desired to see him, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see some signs done by him. So he questioned him at length, but Jesus made no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him, and Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then, arraying him in a gorgeous apparel, he sent him out to Pilate. And Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that day, for before this they had been at enmity with each other. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod, for he sent us him back to us. Behold, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. But they all cried out together, Away with this man, and release to us Barabbas. A man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city, and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but they shouted out, Crucify him, crucify him. A third time he spoke to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no crime deserving death. I will therefore chastise him and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud voices that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, whom they asked for, but Jesus he delivered up to their will. And as they led him away, they seized one, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of the people, and of women, who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turned to them, saying, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming where they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never gave suck. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place which is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments, and the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him. He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him vinegar. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were there 
hanged, railed at him. Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him. Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we are indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingly power. Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light faded and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus cried with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. And now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God. Certainly this man was innocent. And all the magnitude who were gathered to see the sight, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance and saw these things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man who had not consented to their purpose and deed, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud, and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb, where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and saw the tomb, and how his body was laid. Then they returned, and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day they were rested according to the commandment. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. <clears throat> for those preparing for baptism and for their teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For peace in the world, and we think of all those areas of the world where there is war and insurrection, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation 
may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for Joyce Fizzer and family, for Mary Mohar, Mark and Linda Wilson and family, and any of those you may wish to name. For refugees, we especially think of those fleeing the war in Ukraine. Prisoners and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Amen. Would you stand for our feast song? <laughs> Offertory hymn is number 56, I am the bread. Thank you. 